Hi everybody and welcome to this product update video. Today we're covering version 7 of SkySiv Structural 3D. So we've added a lot of new features, a lot of upgrades to existing features and a lot of performance improvements with this update. So we're really excited to get this out to our users. Um, today I'm just going to be looking at the main improvements and features that we've added. Um, in particular we'll be starting off with the area loads upgrade, so it's been completely overhauled. Uh, we've got had some solver speed improvements, some graphic speed improvements, uh, influence lines, and some general UI improvements um, across the, the product. So uh, we do have a full change log here available, so you can review all the um, features in the latest update, as well as any other updates that we release in the future. Um, but I'm just going to take a look at the main key features here. Starting off with our area loads, so we've upgraded um, the new, sorry, the one-way one -way area load option. Uh, we still do have the one-way legacy option, so all of your models are backwards compatible with this version, so you can still continue to use that feature as it was, and your existing models will work the same way. But we have upgraded um, to this new version by default, and what it does is it really uh, tackles a few of the different features that we had in, in column wind loads and one-way um, area loads, but also goes beyond that and is a lot more reliable, a lot more accurate, and also can cater for a lot of different cases and sort of awkward looking um, or awkward shaped area loads. So I'll, I'll give a quick run through what it can do. So we can see I've got two applied here. I'm just looking at the wind loading or the um, loads here in the it was applied as a wind load here. So you can um, with this latest version, you don't have to worry about the beam direction anymore. It will automatically uh, extract that out of the corner node IDs. Um, and so if I select that, you can see these are the settings that I used to apply a load like that. Uh, in this case, you can also do the step interval. So you can see here I've got a pressure force of 1.5 and 2.5, and that's going from 0 to 1.5. and 1.5 to 2.5. So you can see you can put in variable pressures or, or changing pressures. Um, that is optional. So if I was to just do a standard pressure, I could just remove that. And you can see that's just a UDL. Um, with this latest version, you can also exclude members. So say member seven is non, non load bearing. I could just exclude that as a, as a uh, member and automatically adjust the tributary areas to, um, to factor for that. So now it's just applying that extra load to member three. So that's just some of the functionality that's been added. And then we'll look at um, this other area load as an example. So maybe more of a dead load or a live load. And here you can see how we, since we don't have the beam direction anymore, it automatically um, extracts that from the corner nodes. You can just toggle between which direction you wish to apply the loads. Um, you can also turn off the uh, I've got the equivalent load areas, but you can turn that off and just view it in that way. Um, and another added feature to this latest version is you can um, choose what members you want to include or exclude from the one-way area in, in terms of internal area, uh, sorry, internal members. So here I'm just uh, uh, applying to the outer members. Um, it's because I've got them excluded, but I could turn that off completely and it'll detect all, all my internal members. It now also detects angled members. So if you had them in the past, they wouldn't be detected, but now they are. And you can also just include, okay, I just want to exclude my angled members. So you've got a lot of different options there when it comes to applying your one-way loads. We still have the same variance check to make sure that all the area um, load is being distributed to members correctly but we just have added a lot of functionality and capabilities so you can easily apply um, your area loads to members um, in the way that you want to apply them. There's also been a few improve improvements in terms of um, just the functionality. For instance, continuous members now work. So you can see here I've got a continuous member. In the previous version, you'd have to split that in order for this to work. You no longer have to do that. Um, and there's a few other minor updates that have come along with it as well. So feel free to read the, the change log if you'd like to learn more about the area load update that's gone out in this version seven. The second one we wanna look at is the performance improvement. So we've worked really hard in improving the speed of both the solver and the graphics in this latest version, uh, particularly on much larger models. 
Uh, we've seen a really, really good improvement in our solve times. So um, here we have a comparison of our V6 to our V7. So these are some test files that we run and the total time taken for those test files to come back is um, are these times. So you can see there's quite a drastic reduction in time. So 63% reduction in your average solve time. Um, so it's 2.7 times faster. And we've seen a lot of improvements um, across the board, in particular the response spectrum um, reduction, you know, analysis speed reduction, but also linear, uh, non-linear are between 2.6 to 3.1 um, on uh, average times faster, and dynamic frequency are around 1.5 times faster. So uh, you should see this particularly in larger models with a lot of load combinations. And uh, we've also increased the performance, uh, sorry, the capacity of our servers as well. So we've sped up our servers, we've upgraded um, our cloud servers and um, now can solve 100,000 elements in around 38 seconds. So this latest version is, is much more capable in terms of the solver, um, much, much more efficient and able to uh, analyze much larger structures with more load combinations. On top of that, the graphics has been improved by about twofold. So um, they should be smoother, particularly on larger models. I wouldn't use it my, um, ex mine as a good example just because I'm running OBS, it's quite a heavy program, but um, you should notice that the graphics are much smoother on larger models thanks to this smart labels function and just improving some of the efficiency, uh, in the efficiency of the um, algorithms that, that generate the graphics. So um, yeah, should see much smoother graphics on our larger models. Uh, next, we'll be looking at influence lines. So this is a new feature um, added. You can access it here under moving loads or traffic lines. So I'll just remove this one I have pre-made, but basically what you would do is add in a traffic line across a line of points or members. So if I wanna go from two to four, I will do two semicolon four, and I can preview that just to make sure I've done that right. So yeah, I made a mistake, two to one, not four. So you can see there, the pink line shows the preview of where the traffic line is. And then you can auto fill your members, um, which will just um, pull in all the members uh, connected to that, that member. So I'll apply that and can go ahead and solve. And there's a new uh, result button here called influence lines. So you just select which influence line or which traffic line you wanna review, the results, uh, the component of the result, and then add in, say, member one at 25%. And it will show a little black dot just to, oops, it will show a little black dot um, where, where that point of reference is. And I can change, say, member two to 100%. So we'll show that you know, in case you made a mistake there, zero, just do number five. So you can show, show it there, if it's in the opposite orientation, then we'll do 100%. So I can see, re review my influence line. Um, you can also export more detailed results as well if you need to. Um, but yeah, that's influence lines. And then on top of this, um, uh, we've done a lot of UI improvements, just general improvements or upgrades or uh, enhancements to make the modeling or result review uh, a lot easier. So some of those include um, a big update to the plate cuts functionality. So um, here you can see the graphical interface now displays the different diagrams. And in this case, it's a bending moment diagram. Um, you can do strips. Uh, there's some updates to strips. There's a lot of performance improvements, so it's a lot faster as well. Um, and you can review more results now too. So you've got different combination of results. So I can go to my cut strip. So if it's just a strip, I've got wood armor, soil pressure results um, at, on top of my existing component results. So um, yeah, a lot of improvements made to the section plate cut feature. Uh, again, you can review all the details here under these points. Um, we've also added some more improvements to, let's go to this model, some of the result views. Um, 
So we do have a search functionality uh, where you can, in particular on larger models, it's quite useful. So say you've got some bending moment forces. Oh, this model has, I need to update my sections on that one. So let's just go back to this one. And say I'm looking at a much larger model. In this case, it's quite easy to find member five. But if I wanted to search, I can isolate member five, isolate results for that. So you can pick out results um, or members that you want to dive a little deeper into through the search functionality. F search functionality That's just been extended out to the post-processing UI because that is has always been available in this area. If you need to find member five, you can do it like that. Uh, it's just been extended to the results panel. On top of that, um, the renderer has had a bit of an update too. So let's go uh, renderer. Oh, I'm gonna solve, sorry. So now we have um, the graphics, the sort of traditional bending moment diagram in the 3D renderer. So you can review your results um, in that way. Traditionally, it was just the solid elements, whereas now you can visualize them through the diagrams. Um, if you prefer reviewing your results in the renderer, then this makes uh, life a lot easier. So that pretty much covers the main updates. There's been a few uh, additions to our solver as well. Uh, Nonlinear spring supports are now supported, and we've made some improvements to the reporting on dynamic frequency analysis results too. So there's quite a lot um, of other small features and improvements made into the V7 update. But um, for today, I just wanted to go through the main features that have been added in uh, Structural 3D. So we're welcome for you. We invite you to give that all a shot. We hope you're enjoying the software and feel free to message us on the live chat if you have any questions. Thanks.